Hi, welcome back. This is session four of completing the SFSP application packet. In this session, we'll be going through how to complete a site information sheet. So to get started in CMP Web, I'm going to log in as a sponsor. Click SFSP. Click the most current year. I'm going to choose a sponsor to demonstrate for you guys. Um, so looking at my Pleasant Point sponsor summary, the sponsor information sheet and sponsor budget form have been completed. And the next step is to complete the site information sheets. So to get to them, you click the Applications tab. And here they are listed below. If you wish to add or remove sites, you can contact our office. We have a Microsoft form that you would just fill out um, if you both want to add a site to your sponsor or remove. Remember, in order to submit your entire packet for completion and approval, you have to make sure that all the sites listed are accurate and all the ones that are no longer active have been removed. So to get started, I'm going to choose the Boys and Girls Club. First section is the address. Make sure that the address is current. If by chance the address has changed, the Boys and Girls Club in this instance moved to a different location, we have to actually create a, an additional site information sheet and deactivate this old one because the address is associated with this code here. Um, so not a big deal. Again, same Microsoft form. If that address is changed, we just cannot change the address on these sites year to year. It must stay the same. Oftentimes the eligibility is established through the address. Okay, moving on to the next section, the site supervisor. This is the person that is going to be at the site overseeing um, operations. Please enter their contact info. Often we will not contact this person unless there's an emergency, but an emergency number does have to be established. In number nine, if the site is rural or urban, this is not based on your opinion. Um, you actually have to reference the USDA mapper to see if um, this is urban or rural. The mapper was updated in 2024. Um, and if you need access to it, please visit our SFSP website. Number 10, your site location type. You can click any that are that applies, kind of describing your site and what the location is like. If, it is, if it's a school or park, library, um, upward bound housing, housing authority or a camp. If uh, your site does not meet any of those definitions, you can click the other button and then um, enter what you want to describe your site as. In number 11, your site classification type. This is what kind of site you're going to be running. If it's an open site, it means that it is open to anybody 18 and under in the area. Anybody is welcome to walk up and get a meal. If it's a restricted open site, it just means same, um, same idea. Anybody can walk up to your site. You're just limited for capacity. Maybe there's fire code that you have to meet, but you, you're just restricted to the number of meals you can put out at a time. If it is a closed enrolled site, that means you've got some programming going on um, for children. There's a couple different ways or def definitions for closed enrolled sites we can look at a little bit later. For residential camp or upward bound, that means the kids are overnight. You're, you can serve up to three meals. Um, but in, in order to establish eligibility with a residential camp and upward bound, you have to collect income um, applications for your children. If you're a migrant site, you have migrant status on the children. If you're a non-residential day camp, that means you've got continuous programming throughout the day for those kids. Or you could be a homeless site or a housing authority site. So moving on to eligibility. I'm going to select open just for um, demonstration sake. But in number 12, so the types of eligibility, you would select one of these radio buttons to establish your eligibility. The first one right off you would use if you're a camper upward bound. If you're a camper upward bound, um, you're going to project the number of enrolled uh, kids that you have in your program, and then you're going to project the number of kids that uh, you believe will be approved for free reduced meals. Right before you start your service and you actually have collected those applications and have gone through and approved um, the applications, you're going to change these projected numbers to actual numbers right before you start service. So we realize that this is just an estimate, 
Um, but as soon as the summer kind of kicks off, we do expect these numbers to be changed, updated, and to be accurate. For area eligibility, the next one down, there's a couple different types of area eligibility. You can use um, census or school data, census averaging. So really quickly with school data, again, area eligibility is just to have an open site and approve, um, approve that the area that you're serving is low income. So using school data, we would use the uh, October survey or the ED 534 report. When you reference the ED 534 report or October survey, it can be found on our SFSP web page. You're going to find the school and then enter and find the local school that is nearby um, the site you're operating. You're going to enter the free reduced eligible student percentage based on that school. You're going to enter the school number or site ID. If you don't have that number, that's okay. Just make sure that the school name is accurate and the dis district name is accurate. So again, you can use school data. Um, you're just going to find that October survey, type in the percentage of free reduced students at that school, enter the school name and enter the district name. If you're using census data, again, you can find that census mapper on our SFSP webpage. You're gonna enter the address of the site. It will come up with a census block. You can see if the census block um, qualifies or not. You're gonna enter the census block number, which is a great big long number, and the percentage eligible in that census block. Census averaging is another option. You have to go through our office um, to get your site site's eligibility through census averaging. So dis disregard that because um, you'd be working directly with us to get it, um, get it entered. For the special eligibility certification, you will use this when the site in the current year is not eligible using census or school data. So you would select special eligibility certification and put the most recent year that the site qualified. Remember sites are good for up to five years um, of eligibility. So say your site did not qualify in this current year, but it did qualify last year, you'd put SY23, because that's last year, I'm currently recording this in 2024, and then how it qualified. So you put the school name and the percentage or the census block number and the percentage. That's how would you would use um, the special eligibility certification. You can always reference old site info sheets um, to see when the last eligibility was established. So you don't have to go through our office to get that number. If you're a closed enrolled site, um, this is the traditional method of approving a closed enrolled site. There's actually two methods to um, to approve a closed enrolled site. The first being, again, you have the same, same kids every day. Um, you would collect income applications. Uh, you would tell us how many are enrolled in your program and how many would be receiving free reduced price meals. The other option for a closed enrolled site is up at the top, instead of saying open, you would say closed enrolled, but then you would use area eligibility um, either school data or census data to approve that closed enrolled site. You are only able to use school data or census data if you are um, catering to the kids that live uh, in that census area or would attend that local school. You can't use area eligibility if the kids are not from the area. Okay, moving on. To migrant, um, our migrant partners know their know the total children they're serving and what their uh, migrant status is. So they would just be putting those same numbers there. In number thirteen, what is the area served? Give us a little description of um, who you're catering to, what type of clientele you are serving. For numbers fourteen through eighteen, they're just compliance questions. So answer yes or no. Um, depending on what your site is operating like. In number 19, your operating dates. So this is your first day of service and your last day of service. Remember that your claims are affected by number 19 and number 20. 
So make sure they are accurate to the number of days that you're providing meals for in each month for number 20 and your date range in number 19. 21, the total operating days will auto populate once you save the form. For meal service, number 22 through 26, um, you're going to select which meals, which meal types you're serving out of this particular site. So if you were doing breakfast, you would complete the, the breakfast section. The first drop down is an S or a V that stands for S if you are making the meals or V if you are vending the meals or you're purchasing the meals from a third party. You are not purchasing the food or prepping the meals. So select S if you are purchasing the meals and assembling the meals and it doesn't matter where you're where you're actually producing the meals if you have a central kitchen and delivering um, the meals to the site you are considered self prep if you are purchasing um, the food and prepping the meals yourself if you're uh, doing offer versus serve you would click this little button here and then you're going to tell us your begin your bin your begin time and your end time for um, this meal service Breakfast has to be served before lunch and supper. Um, just, you know, think logically here. And then the days of the meal, um, days meals are served during the week. This is actually more days meals are provided for. So if you're doing um, Monday through Friday, you click that very first toggle. I know it's a little, it looks a little off just because it looks like it should be Monday. Um, but if you click the first toggle, it will do the next five days. If you're doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you just click um, consecutively. For estimated attendance, this is how many children you think will attend your breakfast. Um, estimated eligible, which means how many free reduced kids at your camp session would be um, there for breakfast. You put that here if you're a camp or upward bound. And then a cap, which is the maximum number of kids in the area and maximum number of um, breakfasts that you could put out, uh, you know, feasibly. So you can go through, you can select up to two different meal types with the exception of lunch and supper. Or if you're camp or an upward bound, you can do um, breakfast, lunch and supper. You can do three meals because the kids are overnight and they're in your care. Okay, moving on to 27, let us know any other operating um, dates or comments that you wish for us to know, like what days are you not operating, like say 4th of July, or how many different, um, different deliveries you have going on to the site, anything that you feel like we, we should know about your site. Okay, number 28, non-congregate meal service options. This is new in 2024. Um, number 20 itself, the first part of the question is, did you plan to provide non-congregate meals at this site? If you do not, you say no, and then all these questions below are grayed out and you don't have to fill them out. If you, if the site is strictly non-congregate, which means um, you're only going to be distributing meals, you've got no congregate service at all, you'd say yes. If you're doing both, which means you might have one meal type that you're allowing kids to sit down and eat and then you're letting them take another meal away with them or some days are a congregate service and some days are not you would say both so part a if there is a waiver for non-congregate meals due to excessive heat are you requesting that the site be included you would not answer you would answer uh, no or not applicable unless the state of maine is going through um, an excessive heat wave and you're wishing to change your operation to a non-congregate service just because of the heat. So again, just select no or not applicable unless there's a, a waiver for excessive heat. Okay, B, do you plan to provide non-congregate meals at this location as a rural location? So yes, you are only allowed to do non-congregate meals if you're established as a rural location based on that USDA mapper. Um, the only other time that you would say no is if you were using that waiver above for excessive heat. So you better be a rural location to do non-congregate meals. 
The next one down, will multiple meals be provided? So if you're doing multiple meals at one time, so say you have a service on Monday, but you're providing meals for Monday and Tuesday, you would say yes. If you're just providing meals for the day of, you would say no. So if you say yes, you have to fill out um, number one, which is check the meals that will be distributed in a non-congregate operation. So you would check the days um, that you're providing meals for in that, in that distribution. And then number two, how many, um, how many calendar days of meals are included in that distribution? So if you did Monday and you were serving Monday and Tuesday, um, you would say two, for example. And then three, are you giving meals in bulk? Check all the meal types that apply. So you could do any of the two meals um, or three if you're a camp in bulk. C, may meals be picked up by parents or guardians? If you've got a plan in place for parent guardian pickup, let us know. Say yes or no to C. If the site is providing home delivered meals, you would say yes or no here. And then in this text box down below for any um, other non-congregate meal information, please, please be detailed. We need to know a lot about these types of operations. So anything that you need us to know, anything that you don't think the above is clarifying enough for you, or you're, you're, you know, maybe the above questions aren't capturing um, quite the information correctly, please put it here. Okay, operations, uh, does this um, preparation facility for the site receive a health inspection? Let us know. Um, does the site host any other events for any other participants? Let us know. And then describe below. For 31, how many staff members supervise the meal service? These are staff that have been trained by you. They're not camp counselors. These are people that have had direct contact with you and have been trained by you um, to help with meal service. For 32, if this is a, a campsite, uh, list the camp set schedule. So um, how many weeks at each schedule, and then you've got a different set of kids that come through. So let us know what your schedule is like for camp. If it's an outdoor site, um, where will the meals be served during inclement weather? Let us know if it changes to across the street. Again, let us know what happens if you've got a plan in place for inclement weather. And then 34 and 35, just to, um, as a sponsor, you're going to submit the form um, with the intent that everything that you've entered is true and accurate. And if you've got any other comments for us, you would just select um, 35 and enter in the text box there. So that's it. After that, you just save, you go on, you complete the next site information sheet and on and on until you are complete. And then your last presentation or your last section, section five, completing the entire um, application packet in the next video. So thank you. See you in the next video.